Georgia fans, are you guys tired of this backdrop yet? It really doesn't seem like you are. The number one Georgia Bulldog has got a 13,000 ticket allotment going into the college football playoff semifinal. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl against the number four Ohio State Buckeyes, that sold out in one day. So they had to immediately get 2,000 more. Now this is the third time Georgia has played at Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta this season. The first two times have gone pretty well. The first one, a 49-3 win against Oregon, and then the second, a 50-30 win against LSU in the SEC Championship. So Georgia's averaging a cool 49 and a half points going into this game against Ohio State. But one of the biggest questions of this game actually, how will that Ohio State elite offense match up against this Georgia elite defense? Hey everybody, this is Sarah Spencer with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and this is Know Your Dogs. We're gonna be talking about this game for weeks to come, but to help me get our initial thoughts on number one Georgia's matchup with number four Ohio State in the Peach Bowl, I'll be joined by Georgia coach Kirby Smart, Ohio State coach Ryan Day, and my coworker, our Georgia beat writer, Chip Towers. So stay with us. All right, y'all, Ohio State has the number two scoring offense in the country at 44.5 points per game. Guess who's got the number two scoring defense in the country? That would be the Georgia Bulldogs at 12.8 points per game. So how do those two things reconcile? We're gonna find out New Year's Eve, but here's what Georgia coach Kirby Smart and Ohio State coach Ryan Day had to say about each other and their opponents. A lot of respect for Ryan and Ohio State uh, University. What a tremendous job he has consistently done year in and year out um, with that program and uh, just a lot of respect for the way they play the game. And uh, we've watched them, studied them in years past, uh, off seasons, uh, spoken to their staff members and just always knew that, that an opportunity to play them would probably come along, but not knowing uh, when it would happen. Uh, and it came to, to fruition this year. So got a lot of respect for a lot of their players we recruited um, and tried to sign. And they, I've, I've enjoyed watching them mature and play uh, for him and become uh, really good football players. But it should be an electric matchup, electric atmosphere. What a great venue to play it in. Um, and it's really what college football is all about. I mean, these kids having an opportunity to play in a game like this. Certainly, you know, on offense, um, you know, Stetson does a great job in all areas. Um, you know, got a lot of respect for the way he plays and certainly they, they put a lot of stress on you know, with multiple tight ends and really good offensive line and the skill players on the outside and then on defense, um, you know, excellent scheme and, and really good players across the board. I know you guys are already super familiar with Ohio State quarterback CJ Stroud, who just finished third in Heisman voting. Of course, Georgia quarterback Stetson Bennett finished fourth. Another guy that Georgia's really going to have to look out for, though, sophomore wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. He's tied for third nationally in touchdown receptions with 12 and he's ninth in receiving yards per game at 96.4. All those guys, really good receivers, not just him, across the board, uh, very talented, probably one of the most talented groups we faced. When you combine it with the talent of the quarterback, it really grows because he has the ability to get the ball to him on all parts of the field, vertically, horizontally, side to side, uh, Really good job. I mean, historically, Ohio State's had uh, great wideouts. And that's that's that when you go to play Ohio State, you 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 know they're going to have uh, really good wideouts. When you go across the NFL, they've they've produced a lot of really good wideouts, and that's no different than what they have on their roster right now. All right, everybody, let's bring in our Georgia beat writer, Chip Towers. Chip, the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl has actually come a long way, but everybody might not know about that. Tell us about it. Oh gosh, uh, you know, the Peach Bowl has been around forever, 55 years we find out today from CEO Gary Stoken. Uh, I didn't even realize that, but you know, it's just, you know, we're going to see Georgia and Ohio State one versus four play in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, in my first recollections of this bowl are like Syracuse and NC State in the rain, in the cold outdoors at Old Fulton County Stadium. Uh, so it's come a long, long way from those days. And, you know, I think Gary Stoken and his staff, uh, you know, Matt Garvey, Dylan Faulkner, all those, all those guys, their connection with the Atlanta Sports Council and the, and the Atlanta Chamber of Commerce have just brought this game, just ushered in a whole new era. I mean, between that, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, College Football Hall of Fame, it's just an incredible event now. And, uh, you know, it's gone from, oh, you're in the Peach Bowl to, you're in the Peach Bowl, you know, and that's really where it is now. 
Now, Ohio State is coming off its only loss of the season, but it was a big one, giving up 45 points to Michigan. Yeah. Now, on one hand, maybe that's not the worst loss given quality of opponent. Michigan's in the college football playoff as well. Mm -hmm. But when you knew that, when you saw that Georgia was going to be matched up with Ohio State, what was your knee-jerk reaction? Well, I was like, uh-oh, you know, it's kind of like a wow, you know, uh, because if you looked at the two possible opponents, uh, it, it wasn't going to be Michigan, so it was going to be TCU or Ohio State, uh, and I wasn't sure what the selection committee was going to do, and I understand what they did, but it's kind of like, ooh, you know, I'm not sure they got the best of those two matchups. As the number one seed and undefeated, you know, uh, technically, you know, because of seeding, you're supposed to get the easier of the two matchups. That definitely didn't happen in my opinion. The, you know, we you were think talking, TCU is a tougher, or you think TCU is an easier? A, an easier opponent for, Georgia. for Georgia. Georgia, exactly. And then, but, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, there's a reason that this one is at eight o'clock, right? Yeah. This is the marquee matchup. <laughs> Everybody's coming, all the national media is coming to this game. Uh, ESPN game day, you know, the SEC networks, whole circus, um, all of that is, is coming to this game for a reason. It's a big time game. It's remarkable that they, these two teams have only played twice. Uh, I happened to have been at the Citrus Bowl in, in 1992, uh, January of 1993, when they last played. Amazing that they haven't played before that. And it's not for lack of trying. They've had series set up over the years that just weren't able to materialize. So when you look at that standpoint of it, this is a, a, a matchup. And then the other thing that you talked about Listen, in Columbus, I've got friends that cover the team up there that I talk to. You know, they lose to Michigan, and that is the, the sky falling mm -hmm. up there. And they thought everything was gone for them. Then, you know, all the stuff happened on Championship Saturday. The right Saturday. things shook out for them to get the fourth spot. And so there's a new energy in, in that Ohio State camp. They, they really feel like second life. And listen, they are motivated by beating Georgia and defending national champions. But ultimately – they want to rematch with Michigan, and so they're fired up to get that opportunity. Right. Give us an injury breakdown, because Georgia fortunately has some time here to get their ducks in a row injury-wise. We saw A.D. Mitchell come back, yeah. throw a two-point conversion uh, pass, so he looks okay. Yeah. Uh, but Warren McClendon and Ladd McConkie are, I think, two names a lot of people are going to be curious about. Yeah, I, I didn't get the answer I expected today hearing from Kirby Smart. I thought for sure based on what we saw when they played against LSU, were injured against LSU in the first half, both of them, uh, knee injuries against LSU in the SEC championship game. I felt pretty confident, uh, but it's kind of funny about this. Kirby's always, ah, they could have come back. You know? yeah. He's always very optimistic on game day, but he wasn't very optimistic today. They're not practicing. They're, they they're practicing. not practicing. They hadn't been on the field. Now, there hadn't been a ton of practice. It's mostly been conditioning, and you can understand. Um, one of them's dealing, uh, Lab McConkie's dealing with chronic tendonitis, Warren McClendon had an MCL sprain. Neither of those are necessarily season enders, uh, but they haven't been able to participate in the conditioning and the kind of uh, mostly physical, not not, uh, uh, not strategy type of practices, but they're really just being conditioned and strength and conditioning. They haven't been a part of that. So we really don't know. The status is unknown at this moment, and that's a big deal. You know, Warren McClendon, uh, it started more games than anybody on the Georgia roster, 36 in a row, 37 in a row, I think. And Lab McConkie, I mean, second leading receiver for the Bulldogs. So that's a little bit alarming. Chip, thank you so much for joining me. You're quite welcome. Thanks to all of you for watching. Make sure you go to AJC.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you guys better follow us along all Peach Bowl week long because we're going to have so much content for you to watch. You're just going to be overwhelmed with it. Thanks, you guys, for watching.